Hello everyone. Good morning. Uh, today we are going to discuss uh, our Sabbat school lesson number two uh, for April 4 to 10. And uh, I'm going to display here the uh, adult uh, outline, Sabbat school outline, uh, talking about the introduction the revelation of the Bible, uh, the process of uh, inspiration, and the written word. Oh, the inspiration is a mistake there. The written word, the parallel between Christ and Scripture, and understanding the Bible in faith. So, how we read the Bible is significantly. Uh, uh, shape and influence by your understanding of the process of uh, revelation and inspiration. It is wise therefore to uh, allow the Bible itself to determine the parameters of how it should be treated. The question we are going to tackle this morning is how did the Bible came to be? Um, it's a good starting point. So on our mind this lesson is talking about the divine revelation uh, of the Bible and uh, we can read uh, from 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 19 and to 21 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 19 to 21 It says, And we have the word of the prophets made more certain, and you will do it to pay attention to it, as to a light shining in a dark place until the dawn of the morning star arises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy or scripture came from above, came about by the prophets own interpretation for the prophecy never had its origin in the will of man but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit I am reading from the New International Version so verse 19 uh, we're reminded last week about uh, Psalm Sawa uh, where it says uh, your word is a light and to my path, uh, it has a similar connotation here in verse 19. A light shining in dark place provides light that is not natural to, uh, naturally present. And in verse 20, the Bible is not to be interpreted by our own method, but by the Bible's own method. And in verse 21, the Bible was not generated by human intention. This is something that was moved by God. And uh, as we look at the history of canon, the 66 books, how it came together, uh, we can look at the history of how it was done. And uh, according to uh, the history of canonization, uh, the 66 books, how it came together, first, we have the first five books of Moses. They call it Pentateuch. Genesis, Exodus, uh, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and uh, the first five books. And then came along the prophets, the major and minor. They spoke, they wrote, and was recognized as equal to value to that of Moses' writings. Then uh, uh, the New Testament uh, came along and determined that Jesus is the clearest revelation of God. And there are two criteria uh, uh, that the committee decided uh, to determine if they, are, they belong to the New Testament writings. Uh, number one is that the scripture written by an apostle or disciples. One, and then uh, the second one is that the author of the scripture who knew an apostle. Uh, for example, uh, uh, Luke. Uh, so, uh, 
This is how over time the Bible was developed. Little by little, God's people determined that uh, some books are clearly God's message and some books are clearly do not qualify to be included. And some books are on the fence. Uh, where, we do, where do we draw the line, you know? Which one is to be included and which one is not? Those are the questions that the uh, co uh, uh, the committee decided and then uh, during the time of Dover he drew the line he had to decide whether to include the extra books that were scattered throughout the Old Testament and he gathered them together and put them in the middle we call them the apocryphal, apocryphal uh, uh, writings and uh, these books, he said, are interesting and useful to read, but not a drug good for doctrine. Then he turned to the New Testament, his attention to the New Testament, and he decided uh, that four books couldn't fit there too well, because he said the Hebrew, James, uh, Jude, and Revelation uh, don't teach Christ and uh, are not scripturally reliable that's what according to him and he didn't realize that the first verse in the book of revelation is the revelation of jesus christ so uh, but uh, you know uh, that's why he put it there at the end uh, of uh, uh, of the new testament now of course uh, our lesson is going to deal with the process of inspiration here and uh, we have to go back again uh, to uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. And uh, it says, A man spoke from God. My Bible says, uh, uh, in verse 21, it says, For the prophecy never had its own origin with, in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So there is a direct... Uh, supernatural revelation the word comes from God like the prophecy when he talked Daniel uh, those kind of methods that God uh, tried to uh, tell Daniel about what's going on to happen in the future and then in 2 Timothy 3 16 and 17 it says there uh, let me read <clears throat> Second Timothy three sixteen. It says here that uh, all scriptures is God breath and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training for righteousness. So it says that uh, all scriptures are uh, breathed by God. Actually, in the original Greek word, it should say all inspired scripture is God's breath. Because this, this is important. If you have a Catholic Bible and you have the apocryphal Bible and your Catholic friends would say that, you know, it says that Timothy, that all scriptures are inspired. But clearly, uh, the apocryphal books are not inspired. The, those are traditions. And that's why the, the Greek original uh, meaning of it says, all inspired scriptures is God's breath. It's not uh, all what's written in the uh, other versions are really inspired. So uh, another uh, one biblical claim that uh, the actual Greek is that uh, inspired is God's breath. The Bible is a letter in a page. It is a human product, but inspired, infused. And then uh, back down in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18, it says, God says to Moses, I will put my words in his mouth. This is really directly from God. 
And there is a question about that hey, because God told Moses, uh, you know, many instructions, uh, the Ten Commandments, uh, those, those are uh, words that came from God. It's not Moses uh, 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 making all uh, these words. It was an instruction from God. There is also an element in the process of uh, inspiration. Uh, even in the Old Testament, Joshua chapter 10, 13, he was referring to some outside source. I mean, there is a reference, and it says there in Joshua 10, 13, that it, as it is written in the book of Joshua, meaning to see when he was writing the book, he was also referring to some sources, uh, it says the book of Joshua. And in the New Testament, you can see in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, uh, the question is, another uh, category of inspiration is, uh, no, Luke chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, it says a very cultured and sophisticated verses uh, so far. And the question is, did Luke say he was inspired by God to write the book? Or did God put his words in his mouth? No, he did not say that. In other words, there were many written gospels already. And Luke said he did a careful investigation and research. He talked to eyewitnesses, uh, people who saw Jesus Christ, who walk with Jesus Christ and people who witnessed Jesus Christ in Jerusalem when he died and he was crucified on the cross. Uh, Luke gathered data and uh, the information is from the minister of the word in the context. Uh, minister of the word uh, here means there's some professional memorizer people who were skilled in memorizing and producing them accurately. So Luke took down this information carefully and orderly account and he did his research. These verses uh, in Luke indicate that God did not inspire or dictated but Luke's writing, the book of Luke, became part of the New Testament. And so here it is, uh, it is not only based on uh, the research that Luke was dealing with. So, the process of inspiration, supernatural direct revelation, and an example of look uh, some research and investigation but based on what was written already it's not uh, it's not in his own words he based his writings based on the history based on the uh, uh, you know the available information historical data that was already talking to people also Jesus Christ talking to witnesses when they were with Jesus Christ. So, uh, there you go. And then, uh, of course, uh, when we talk about uh, the Bible, uh, somewhere uh, after Jesus Christ left uh, and ascended to heaven, during the time, uh, oral tradition was a norm. Uh, uh, during the Testament time. However, in uh, the first century, uh, there is a shift from oral to written. And we know that already in the Old Testament that uh, God told the prophets and the authors of the books to write. And so the written word uh, was important. And say, uh, there are some few examples that we have here that uh, uh, it says that in Exodus 34, 27, God told Moses to write down these words. 
Exodus 17, 14, he said, God told Moses to write this on a scroll as something to remember. Exodus 24, 4, Moses wrote down everything the Lord has said. And then Joshua 24, 26, uh, Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law of God. And Jeremiah uh, says that God of Israel told Jeremiah, write in a book of the words that I have spoken. Of course, and we go down to the book of Revelation, since John was told to write it on a scroll of what you see. Write what you have seen. And Revelation 21, 5 Write this down, he said, for these words are trustworthy and true. So, the question is, why would the Lord have Moses and other authors write down this word as opposed to having recite them in the front of the people? What is the obvious advantage of the written word? The advantage of the written word is that Say, sir, the, the written word is hard to tamper. Uh, written documents is preserved over time. And the reader less likely to forget when written. It is also accessible to everyone. With the medium of uh, social uh, platforms now, you can propagate uh, anything you write and distribute it to the, the whole world and everybody can see it uh, 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 using internet access. This is important of the written word here. But you see, the disadvantage of that is that uh, in the oral speech, you know, uh, it is easy to get distorted and misused. For example, you know, uh, when you are in a group of people and you play the gossip game uh, you know uh, the gossip chain game I mean, taking changes uh, while you know what whatever the first person said whisper it to the next person and the next person whisper it to the next person and while being handed down from one person down to the other toward, down the line what was originally said at the beginning is completely different at the end of the line. People forget. People misheard. People sometimes misunderstand what you say. And especially when uh, you know, people uh, cannot understand the way you speak. Less likely to forget when written, you know. Uh, there are negatives with written communication though. Because uh, oral communication is more powerful and clear. Uh, the tone of voices, the gesture, the body language are important part of the communication. You cannot do that in the written word. The written word is fixed. You do not know what's going on there. Uh, when you listen to the lecturer, you can see the importance of of intonations, importance of had the emphasis by by uh, the tone of his voice. Uh, <clears throat> the the oral, oral and written communications are both valuable though. That's why preaching still works. There is value in both